Okay, so now we're going to deal a little bit with the um, shrink property, the flex shrink um, property of flex boxes. So here we have a list of employees and all looks well. Um, and let's take a look. And again, as, as I've said before, you guys, you can go to um, the video description to get all of the code for this, right? You go down here. Um, so let's take a look. There are, here's my container, and here are all the flex items. I've called them flex item employee. Um, and so on the items, we have flex one, one auto. And again, these videos are in series one, two, three, four, five, six. So you need to have watched the video just prior to this one to fully understand it. So now we've got a height of 35 pixels, but let's, let's say that we, uh, well, first let's review flex grow. Let's say that we put flex grow to zero. So it's no matter what, um, they're going to be 35 pixels, assuming they don't shrink. Let's also set flex shrink to zero. So don't get larger don't get uh, smaller, just stay exactly 35 pixels because our flex basis is set to auto. Um, and if it's auto, it will first say, okay, is the, ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, one other thing. On my container, I have set the flex direction to column. So remember that the, the main axis is going to be vertical, okay, going from top to bottom. And so now the space height, 35 pixels, is going to be right, right about, you know, this much, right? Um, Okay, and justify content. I started them flex flex start. If my flex direction is column, justify content. Remember, justify content aligns them on the main axis. And as I just said, the main axis now it's vertical because we've got flex direction column. So it's starting them all up at the top. So let's just refresh this. And let's see here, what do we have? 35 pixels. Oopsie daisy. Well, let's come down to 25. Let's see what we have here. All right, there we go. So they're 25 pixels. And they're aligned at flex start, which is so it'll be up at the top of this, we'll call it a column container. And you'll see that they're not growing. This positive free space is not being taken and allocated to each item, okay, so that it will grow because we have flex grow set to zero. Um, and just in case you guys don't remember, let's go ahead and take these properties here just so you remember. Okay, R. So remember you guys, uh, flex zero, that would be this one, flex grow, flex shrink, and here we have auto. These are the shorthand properties. So now, what if we set these to uh, 45? Now let's, let's do something even more bold than that. Let's say it's uh, 65, okay? 
Now we have overflow scroll set on the parent container item. And remember, the parent container display flex. And then the children, we use this flex property. Okay, now what happens? So now it scrolls. So we could have, maybe, maybe it's more natural at 35, but what if we had, whoa, we've got all, we've got a ton of more employees. We grew, our company grew, and now we've got a bunch more. So still, we'll do that. Um, so, now what if we say um, flex shrink? Yes, we're going, we're going to shrink it, shrink them. So Flexbox, it will try to, okay, let's say, so let's give ourselves some more employees. Okay. Flexbox is going to try like mad to keep all of these things within the container, right? Here we have Larry Last, and here we have Larry Last again. And over here, there's Larry Last, okay? And there's Larry Last again. It is taking what would have normally happened if there's 65 pixels each or even 35, is they would have come, these employees would have come down here, so it creates some negative space. Okay. Um, so what if we did this? If we did this here, we'll say, uh, flex shrink zero and then we're gonna come up and we're gonna take off overflow scroll border so we can see it we're gonna put that five on that so so now you can see whoa whoa, whoa look at this all of this right here is negative free space all right so Flexbox, if we put Flex Shrink to one, it's going to take all of this space here, whoops, from this spot right there, all the way down to here, and it is going to allocate those, or allocate that negative free space to each item in our list. So it's going to deduct proportionally each one by just a tidge so that it can keep them within this flex container here, the blue background. Flexbox will try to do that as much as possible. Okay, so if we come over here and we say, all right, well, yes, they all have a flex grow factor, a flex shrink factor of one. It's gonna say, well, we're gonna try to fit them on there. And sure enough, it brings them down quite a bit, right? Okay, so let's go back to giving them a shrink of zero. Get, we've, we've decided that 35 pixels is a good solid height, and we wanna keep that um, across the board. And so now what we need to come up here and we need to say overflow, it will scroll, that's on the parent container, and sure enough, now we've got our scrolling list of employees that could go on forever. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys is this just a little bit of fun CSS right here. It's called Better Scroll Bar, just this bit here. And all you need to do is you come down to your parent container. It's a class. We'll come down to our parent container and all we need to do is give it this class of better scroll bar. And we'll save that. And now we've got a scroll bar here that if you come to the page, you don't have to hover your mouse and kind of move a little and then the scroll bar appears. It's much better, I think, for users, especially users that are gonna be new to your site 
and they're not sure how to use things initially, this will tell them right away that, oh, whoa, whoa, I have a lot of choices. Now, of course, you have, um, and you can modify it to just, you can modify the, the color, um, you can do all sorts of things there. And the one thing to note with this scroll bar is we've got Firefox and then we've got Google Chrome. Um, and then you've got Google Chrome on a Mac versus Google Chrome on Windows and Firefox on Chrome versus Firefox, or excuse me, Firefox on Windows versus Firefox on Mac. And one thing I've noticed is that there's one of those four I forgot. I, I, I use this in something I built for my old employer, a company about, I don't know, seven or eight months ago. And there's one of those four where it will not appear until you start scrolling over. It will appear, but on the other three, it will always be present and always alert the users to the fact that, hey, there's scrollable content here, there's scrollable content here, because they don't always see that right um, now in our case in the company I was working for they had settled on Google Chrome so in fact all the users of the application were going to be using uh, Google Chrome and usually on Windows in fact even though the, all the developers would use uh, uh, Mac so you can see if you come to the page you might not immediately understand that there's scrollable content there when there is. So something sometimes that can be a good thing, I think. But maybe not. It's you know it's up to you, whatever. Um, now what else could we do? Ah, that's basically it for this one.